Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a pros and cons live stream. Let me adjust this slightly. And uh, yeah, this isn't super exciting per se, but I thought I'd draw a little today. I got to open up some new uh, brushes and pens here. But every once in a while, I like to do this. Uh, I figure, hey, if I'm going to draw, just turn it into content, chat with some folks. Feels a little less lonely and uh, can be fun. Oh, cool. Thanks for jumping in, folks. Oh, yeah, yay. Art stream, yay. <laughs> uh, could be fun, could be fun. I did see the Doctor Who trailer. I got a kick out of the uh, butterfly effect joke that they made in it. Hello, someone. Great name. And Biz. Uh, I just did an interview where I was the subject, to be clear. Um, uh, I was there to give color commentary for an upcoming... Um, Ninja Turtles documentary podcast. And uh, I guess some people think I know a little bit about Ninja Turtles. I kind of do. It was fun. It was fun. Almost two hours uh, uh, talking about Ninja Turtles history. So that was cool. Uh, I did see Ghostbusters last night. You know, uh, critically, it's getting savaged, but I'll be honest. I had a decent time. I wouldn't call it spectacular, but I thought it was pretty good. This is what I'm, I've been inking lately, so I'm going to keep inking it. They had the Beetlejuice trailer or teaser uh, before the Ghostbusters movie, so I saw that last night, too. No, did they actually release the trailer for Penguin on HBO Max? I didn't know that. I'll have to check that out if that's what happened. I did not see Three Body Problem. I don't know that what that one is. It sounds a little familiar, like I heard it in passing, but I, I didn't see it. Thanks for jumping in. Appreciate it. Nice to have you here. This is just sort of a chill hangout where I'm just going to doodle. And I've got some popcorn from last night. So that's fun. Well, my patrons have helped me decide what will be the uh, next episode of the show. We're going to do a retrospective on comic tropes about Ramona Frieden's work, Ramona Frieden's career. Oh, this is a really delicate brush. Wow. Bear with me, just going to throw in some inky blink lines. Nope, not going to work with this. Going to need to use a technical pen. That's okay. Might do more like 7 out of 10, but, uh, but I, I enjoyed it okay. But that's, I like the actor's. I like the concept. I like that world. So I might be more forgiving than some. I will say that, you know, I did laugh actually several times. So I guess, you know, what do you want out of a movie at the end of the day? Um, you know, nothing's going to ever compare to the original. It just isn't. Like the original is, is, is just a fantastic, fantastic film. But uh, I laughed several times at Ghostbusters and... Uh, what else? Um, Story-wise, maybe a little disjointed because there's just a there's a lot of characters this time around. But um, but I laughed, so so it's fine. That's fine. Okay, some people are saying Penguin just came, the trailer for that just came out. I'll have to take a look. I know, I know. I'm a nut that doesn't always use a ruler. That's just my way.
I admire it when there are some um, artists out there like Michael Golden that can just sort of do really straight lines without a ruler. I, I don't know how. You guys are looking good too. You're all looking good. <clears throat> I have a weird song stuck in my head. Gold by Spandau Ballet. Everybody's favorite. Out of Batman's Z-list rogues. Uh, which three do you think need to be reimagined or developed into better ones? Personally, for me, it's Orca, the Monk, and Zebra Man. Out of his Z-list villains? Um, hmm. I'd have to think about that to like even remember a bunch of uh, Z-list villains. Um, you know, Polka Dot Man hasn't really been um, re-envisioned as anything in the comics lately. So maybe him. Right now, this is for fun. But it could become something. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, figured out why my comic book store didn't do pull lists. It's because they're closing. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. That's frustrating. Huh. That does make sense why they would not be doing, um, a pull list right now. Darn it. Darn it. I am so sorry to hear that. Wow. Wow. But that makes sense, like, because we were all like, why would a store not do a poll list? Uh, that would be an understandable reason. I think when I'm uh, done inking this, I'm going to go in and try to clean up certain things, you know, digitally. And also um, maybe do some zip -a tone effects on it. We'll see. We'll see. Something I'm considering. We'll see. Uh, bah, bah, bah. What Vertigo non superhero comic would you like to see get adapted? Well, I would love to see another attempt at Why the Last Man. I liked uh, what they were doing. I think that that's worthy of a show. Um, Non-superhero. Maybe Transmetropolitan. Oh, Fables. Hmm. I'm not in a position to support you financially, so just wanted to say thanks for all the free entertainment. That's what I'm here for. It's all good. It's all good. Glad you're enjoying it. Thank you. Do you just do the inking or the drawing as well? Oh, I did the drawing as well. I did the drawing as well. I'm just... The drawing part of it is kind of boring, I think, to watch uh, on camera. And actually, I shouldn't say it's boring to watch. That's not accurate. It's tough for me to focus on doing penciling uh, while on a live stream. I've done it a few times. It's always a lot looser than what I typically do because there's a lot of decisions that you have to make when you're penciling something. And I'm not very good at like pausing and thinking that through. Um, but inking is a little bit more mechanical. I mean, there's still decisions to be made, but, um, 
it's a little easier for me to sort of focus on and, and still chat. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'm over explaining it. But anyway, yeah, so my, um, my uh, uh, patrons have determined that my next episode should be about Ramona Fraden. And I'm definitely looking forward to that one. Uh, she was a really impressive and fun creator. Somebody who kind of fell into comics. There's a lot to like there. There's a lot to talk about. I think it'll be good. I don't know if it'll get as many views as like some things that I do, but we'll see. Well, that's true. 100 Bullets and Scalped would also be... Scalped would be really good for TV, actually. Because crime, crime stories work. Book of Magic, yeah. I believe the filth was Vertigo. I'm pretty sure. That's an interesting idea. Good morning from Korea. I was happy to wake up and see you live. Well, hello, Korea from the U.S. of A. Wow. All the way from North Korea. We wouldn't have expected that, would we, folks? Sorry, I guess I'm uh, not as chatty as always. I got to think of what, what to talk about. What to talk about. Would Coletta stream while linking? He was fast, so I don't think so, but I don't know. I'd have loved to see the drawing or loose pencil sketching part as well, but I understand how it would be harder to do in terms of YouTube or just filming generally. Just for me, it would have been tough. For me, it would have been tough to, to like be making the penciling decisions. Um, as I went along. This is supposed to be an actual drawing by the character, so I'm just sort of making extra lines to sort of indicate that he's drawing. Uh, Maybe he hasn't gone to inks, even though I'm drawing in inks. Maybe. Who knows? Is the X-Men out yet? The first two episodes of X-Men 97 are out, and... Um, I think that they're really good to be honest. Really good. I was I was pleasantly impressed with them. Uh yeah, definitely pulls like from the the Claremont era in a really nice way. Uh, that's some of my favorite X-Men stories, so it it's been fun to see them uh again and see them get reinterpreted. I, I like it. Um, I think it's getting a pretty good response. That's my understanding. Anyway, yeah, curious to see uh, other people's opinions, but um, no real complaints from me. I think it's one of the better things that uh, Marvel Studios has produced in a while, to be honest. I, I was really impressed with it. I streamed my art less because my cameras are all busted. Oh, I know what that's like. Also, it 
feels less pressure to make content since all of social media is a mess. That's true. That's true. Um, what's your take on gimmick superpowers like sidekicks from Sky High having powers that seem useless but actually fit a niche? I, you know, it makes sense within certain stories. I think the X-Men have always had um, a certain amount of people with gimmick superpowers. It, it's not always easy to tell ongoing stories with that as a main character. No, the MCU definitely would not have the rights to do anything with NFL Super Pro because uh, those rights would be co-owned with the NFL, and I don't think that they have any interest in um, revisiting NFL Super Pro. No, I don't think you can ever expect to see a reprint or a remake of NFL Super Pro, just to be realistic. Anybody got any um, comic conventions or travel planned? Always loved hearing about that kind of stuff. Wish I could travel more. Anything to escape my life. Ay, ay, ay. I think now that I look at this and I've got like three images, none of these um, prints are supposed to be selling. So... I think I'm only going to draw that once and then just um, repeat it digitally. Like there's no reason for me to draw it three times and try to make it look the exact same in today's day and age. So to be clear, I'll be drawing the characters, but I'm not going to like redraw this stack of prints several times because it is supposed to look the same in each of the three panels. That's some, that, that's an area where, um, Man, this new age of digital capabilities really comes in handy. Before that, you'd have had to, like, you know, just do, I don't know, light box or photocopies or something. And it would have been so obnoxious and annoying. For next March, a trip to Japan. Very nice. That's so cool. Have a great time. Traveling to a con in seven hours. Very cool. Well, thanks for watching. I'm planning a Captain America outfit for next year's Megacon, but it's hard to find the correct shade of blue. Mm, never looked into anything like that. I've never cosplayed before. I don't know if I'd even be able to. I, I don't think I'd have the, the talent to do a cosplay outfit. Maybe I could go as a Ghostbuster. Then I don't have to wear a mask or anything. That could be fun. Comic book characters and movie characters are usually different IPs, often owned by different companies. I guess it all depends. Uh, I might be going to a comic convention in Natick, end of June. Johnny Whitaker of Sigmund and the Sea Monsters fame. Well, good luck, Chemdog. Look at all this Donatello stuff behind me. I thought that when I was being interviewed at first that it was going to be for like a video podcast, but it's an audio podcast. But I was ready either way. I love talking about the Ninja Turtles. How about you guys? Do you like Ninja Turtles at all? No. <laughs> Who likes Ninja Turtles? Blah. Gold. Always believe in your soul. You got the power to know you're indestructible. Always believe it. 
Yeah, I've been to Nantucket, but not for a long, long time now that I think of it. Um, boy, when would the last time I've been to Nantucket be? It might have been the 80s, the late 80s. Wow. I have to think about that. Need a clip of Dudley do arguing over black and navy blue. Huh. I definitely... Oh, from the movie version? I never saw that. Was Jaws filmed off of Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard? I thought it was filmed off Martha's Vineyard primarily, but I could be wrong. I haven't thought about that in a while. Sorry, I'm thinking something through. There we go. Martha's Vineyard. Got it. Yeah. That's cool. I love Jaws. I think that that is so cool. Oh, I should still uh, pull out that Jaws manga that I found uh, on my last trip to Japan. That would be that would be fun to review. Wings, everybody loves wings. Have you read the mon Jaws manga? I haven't read it yet. No, it's going to take me a while to translate. I I would be very slow, but I can do it, and I will, and I will. My solemn vow to all of you is that I eventually will translate the Jaws manga. Isn't that beautiful? What a lovely vow. What uh, movies are you all excited to see this summer? Anything? I'm excited for Furiosa. I've pretty much never been disappointed by um, George Miller. Never really been disappointed, so um, I think that, that one has a lot of promise. Can check out Ghostbusters, Godzilla vs. Kong, sure. The current police chief in Martha's Vineyard is the kid in Jaws. They pulled the fake shark fin prank in the movie. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Just marathon the Mad Max films. That's cool, man. Civil War does look interesting. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. I'll probably see Godzilla and Kong next week and uh, with my friend, yeah, or Thursday or Friday. So, yeah. My friend John and I. Both enjoy uh, kaiju-type films, so that'll happen. That happens. Guzzoline, yes. I'm just putting in a um, texture for those ceiling tiles that you know have all the sort of pock marks. I don't I don't know what that is. It probably has something to do with the audio, uh, sound buffering or something like that. I guess I don't know. Yes, I, I have turned on the Pluto TV Godzilla channel in the background. 
Never heard of Riddle of Fire. Hmm. I'll try to keep that in mind. I didn't hear about that one. I would like to see the um, Late Night with the Devil. I, I do like horror, so that's definitely a strong possibility of something that I will see sometime soon. Oh, nice. Have I ever covered the Jurassic Park comics? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I'll be honest, that one hasn't occurred to me. You guys come across any good YouTube uh, content or channels lately? I do watch a lot of YouTube, or at least have it on in the background while I'm working on things. Tops did that Mike Mignola, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Yeah, I remember that. Ah, uh, yeah, I would love to love the crow, but um that trailer made me a little nervous too, I will I will admit. Um that I don't know what to make of it yet. I don't know. I just, the story and stuff might be good, but um, I don't like the look. It, 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 it's so gutter punky. We'll see. The Joker Crow. Croker. <laughs> oh, cool. I'm glad you read that one. Yeah. Junji Ito's Frankenstein is just a... A straight up, straight up adaptation of Mary Shelley's incredible novel. Yeah. Comic tropes, you say? Maybe I'll check it out. What do they do? Uh, recap comics? In issue two of The Crow, The Crow Crows... The crow goes crow. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? I'll take it. It's crowing time. Now that would be that's a decent catchphrase, but let me let me propose this one. Every time the crow's about to go into battle, right before he starts a big fight, he just goes Kah! and then he just goes, you know, punches guys and stuff like that. Kah! I do want to say that I really appreciate comic tropes. I don't have a lot of money to buy comics, so I get to learn a lot about them through shows like yours. Okay. Uh, New York's Comics and Picture Story Symposium might interest you. Each week, a comics pro does a presentation. I've never heard of that. That's, that should be his crow 
uh, catchphrase. I'm going to crow all over the place. And then every time he punches someone, he goes, Kaka! Kaka! I love the original Crow. It's not necessarily even like a perfect movie or, or anything, but there's just a lot to like about it. Um, the tone is, is consistent. The performances are uniformly strong. The music's incredible. There's just a good vibe to the whole thing, even if the story isn't necessarily... It doesn't necessarily go in an unexpected direction per se. I don't know. I like it a lot. Have you ever thought of doing an episode on Marvel U? Oh, I have considered that. Yeah, the You Decide contest. Bill J Jemis and Ron Zimmerman. Um, I've considered that before. And you know what? It's like some of those comics are just so bad. They're not really fun to talk about. Like Marvel, I don't even find that really funny per se. I find it just kind of annoying, if that makes sense. Um, not, not Marvel's finest hour. That is for sure. That is for darn sure. Yeah. Wow. The you decide contest might be interesting to talk about in terms of historical context, but it wouldn't be fun to review those comics. Did he? Mark Descascos did? Mark Descascos, I mean? Hmm. Yeah, I remember his Crow TV show, and it was better than the sequels. Mm, Future Imperfect is really strong. That's really cool. Yeah, there was this period where, like, Bill Jemis and Bob Harris and stuff were in charge at Marvel and uh, it, it, it wasn't great. It wasn't great. In my opinion, your mileage may vary. Your mileage may vary. Yesterday while I was working, I turned the new Roadhouse remake uh, on, the one with Jake Gyllenhaal. It was okay. It certainly, just to be clear, is not as good as the original. So, yeah. No kidding. Hmm. I, um... I read a little of Ultimate Adventures, but I don't remember it all that well because a lot of this stuff ended up sort of getting retconned. Hello, James Robinson. Thank you for jumping in. Marvel and Trouble. The, the biggest disappointment for me is that Trouble does have some really good-looking art by the Dodsons. So it just feels sort of like a waste. But maybe I'm being too harsh. It was more like an interesting idea to explore, you know, May and Ben Parker and all of them when they were young. That's an interesting idea. It's very tricky what exactly fits into trash movie bonanza and what doesn't. But um, I I hope you guys like episode three of trash movie bonanza. Jim and I talk a lot in that one. The movies we 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 just had a lot to say. So uh, I I had my I've got a good friend 
that also likes these kind of movies and he he, he liked episode two but he's like you got to be shorter it, it, it uh, he's like between 30 minutes to an hour to talk about two movies and i go you know i understand that um that perspective i do but <laughs> jim and i just had a lot to say about each of the next movies I'd say close to like 40 minutes to say about each movie. So like the, the episode three might actually be longer than the first two episodes probably will be. Um, but we'll try to be like brief and to the point and just hit the highlights, but it's so much fun to talk about weird parts of bad movies and, and bad movies are going to have a lot of weird parts, you know? Yes, thank you. When a film is interesting, you want to talk about everything. Like, I could legit talk about some of these movies, like, say, Pieces. I could talk about it for at least as long as it's running time because beyond just talking about the scenes, then you would want to talk about some of the behind-the-scenes decisions and stuff. So, I, I agree. I think that when it comes to movie discussion... I don't think it's that bad to have long episodes because I think a lot of people will either watch them in chunks and come back and, and finish that, or they'll have it on in the background, which is fine too. It, it, it feels like you're hanging out hopefully with like a friend or some friends and just talking about fun stuff. We'll see. The stuff that could be an interesting one. Six string samurai could be a decent one. Yeah. Is there a reason why Aunt May and Uncle Ben weren't just Peter's parents? I think just to give Peter um an even more sort of working class background where he he didn't have his parents. He had people that loved him, but that were definitely like older and just like one step removed. Like his parents just weren't around for some reason. And there's plenty of working class families that would in, you know, the 1960s where an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, uh, uh, somebody like that may have been taking care of them. And I think it just made Peter a little more blue collar, um, for his background. I, I think that that's all that was going into it. And just to be a little different too, just to be a little different. Um, you watch mine and red letter media. Well, I'm in good company there. I don't think I know Hawk the Slayer. I, I feel like I've heard that, but I, I definitely haven't seen it. So, um, I'll try to keep that one in mind. Uh, yeah, I've heard of the New York Ninja movie. Um, we're going to do a ninja episode for episode four, just to be clear. So um, that that obviously isn't like, you know, a, a comic book show per se, just like a show made by two guys that are sort of involved in comics. Obviously, Jim makes comics. Um, but uh, most of the episodes will have at least something a little bit comic book related about them. But yeah, we're gonna do. Uh, Jim Jim really wanted to cover ninjas, and I was totally down for that idea because there's some really bonkers uh, ninja content, especially out of the '80s when ninjas were everywhere. Ninjas were everywhere. The Generation X TV special. TV would be interesting to go into. Oh, that was Sean Chen asking me about the New York Ninja movie. I haven't seen that one, Sean, but lovely to see you here. Thank you for watching. Now I'm embarrassed. Sean is like a professional artist, and, and this stuff obviously isn't going to compare to that. But, but thank you for jumping in. The Remo Williams movie. That's fun. I don't know if I'd call that trash or schlock, just sort of B-movie, but we'll see. Oh, right, because Jim did the Gen X uh, uh, comic. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting um, idea. We'll see. 
Uh, no, I have not seen Utopia, actually. Sorry. Hmm. Blind Spot. I've got a few of those. Samurai Cop is definitely like a potential. The but it probably wouldn't be something we do right away just because it has been covered before. And I, I'm sure that everything we've talked about has been covered somewhere, but it would be nice to dig into stuff that's been covered at least a little less or that we're especially passionate about. Hi, Kyle. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily expect Leprechaun in the Hood imminently is all, but it's. It's not a bad choice. It's not a bad choice. Um, but I thanks for engaging me in this discussion, folks, about trash movies. Uh, that's that's fun. It shows that there's at least some interest in us doing this silly little show that's really just for for us and hopefully people like us. Hopefully. Yeah, I remember the show Mutant X. Uh, it's a weird history behind it where, you know, all of the, the, the rights behind it were a mess. An absolute mess. Wild Angels. Hmm. The Trip. Hmm. I haven't seen it all, Chemdog. I've seen all of season one and the first few of season two. And you know what? The Chucky TV series is pretty good. You know what probably helps it? The fact that the same guy has written all of the movies and the TV. Like Don Mancini's always overseen everything Child's Play and Chucky. So the continuity is always there and the tone is always there. I would not say Mutant X was very good. Because... It's like it takes the idea of the mutants, but they couldn't use any of the material from the comics. None of it. So they're not mutants in the same way. None of the characters, not even like a reference. You can do any of that. So what are you left with? The idea of just mutants? That, 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 that's nothing. It's nothing. It was a mess. Now, I would say um, the next thing that I'll probably do is a deep dive into the history of the Spando Ballet song Gold. Nightman. Oh, my goodness. That's right. That was a show. You know what would be interesting, actually, for comic tropes, now that I think of it? It would be interesting to do an episode about the the short-lived superhero shows that weren't based on comics. Because like the Incredible Hulk and Wonder Woman, for instance, were a hit. So there were all these ideas for sort of superhero shows before they could get the, before anybody bothered to get the rights, they, they were just like, we'll just create our own. And I'm not talking about Nightman, but I'm talking about all these shows like Auto Man, uh, who could turn into a car, basically. It wasn't Turbo Teen, but it was like that. Um, there was, um, oh, who was the guy that could turn into like the animals? I forget it. Not, not animal man from the comics, but there was something similar to that for a show. Uh, you know, even going into the nineties, we had things like Mantis before, uh, X-Files, um, Manimal, Manimal. Thank you very much, Richard Salt. Yes. Manimal, Auto Man. Some, wasn't Teenagers of Science one with Courtney Cox? I don't know if Dark Man did get a TV show. He had direct, you know, direct to shelf movies, like not theatrical releases. Bible Man. Misfits of Science. That's what I'm thinking of. Misfits of Science. But there were like all these shows. And the thing was that they didn't have 
the technology to pull off very good special effects on a TV budget at the time. Because before you could do CG, so much of it had to be done practically that it was just not cost efficient. So everybody always had like, you know, very simple powers like turn invisible or turn into this, that, or the other, like a thing that you could just have represented. Um, turn small, but, you know, it was really just like green screened on like, you know, an out of scale background. Um, it was, it was, it was kind of pathetic. The superpowers that people had. I don't remember auto man super well, but it was definitely meant to look like Tron. Like he had this, he could turn into like, you know, like use like light lasers to, to make a car or something. By the way, since you brought up the Roger Corman fantastic form um, thing, um, my friend and fellow YouTuber Godzilla Mendoza did an episode uh, about the history of that, which I guess not everybody knew. I, I, I sort of took it for granted that a lot of people knew about that, but but no, um, I, that was naive on my part and uh, smart on Godzilla Mendoza's part. So he made an episode that um, a lot of people found interesting and the actors in that movie are leveraging that they've created a uh, petition to, to have Marvel actually release this somewhere. You know, even if it's like, say just on Disney plus or, or on DVD, Blu-ray, you know, like it should be released to, to the world. It was low budget and behind the scenes, the Roger Corman, fantastic four movie in its simplest terms it was basically a company had the rights to make Fantastic Four, but they had to produce a movie within a certain time frame. To retain the rights and extend those rights so that they could make a bigger budget one, they sub-licensed to Roger Corman to make a super cheap Fantastic Four movie. That let them keep the rights. What it meant was the movie behind the scenes was never intended for release, but none of the actors knew that. And they were giving it their all. And honestly, a lot of the performances are quite good. Now, I think realistically, this is just me personally talking, I don't think the rights for that would be easy to untangle. I don't think it's as simple as Marvel has the rights and are just sitting on it. I don't think it's that simple. I think that there, I, I don't know this. This is just me saying what I think about it. And um, I don't think it would be that easy to, to, to actually release. Maybe it could be. Maybe it could be. But I don't think so. Nevertheless, there is a petition out there. So if you want to tell Marvel, hey, I'd be interested in actually seeing this, check it out. The 90s Punisher and Captain America movies were intended for release. They just ended up being not so good and went direct to video two. They may have gotten a very small theatrical release, at least the Punisher one, but basically ended up direct to video. But that was, they were intended to be theatrical releases. The 90s Punisher one isn't bad as an action movie. It's not, it's not too dissimilar to what the Punisher is. It's it's a little different, and he doesn't wear the costume, which is kind of weird. Damage Control would make a great TV show in any generation. G Damage Control is a fantastic idea, and I think that it should like take from the comics and 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 be you know co-funded equally by Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, and Tony Stark, Iron Man. I think that that would be an interesting thing to have behind the scenes. But anyway, yeah, I'm talking about the Dolph Lundgren one. Uh, he stole a car twice by pretending to have an upset stomach. Really heroic stuff. Thanks, Captain America. The Captain America movie is garbage. I don't mean to be mean, but it's pretty bad. The actor who played Captain America hadn't really done anything else, but he happened to be the son of the famous reclusive author J.D. Salinger, 
the, the actor that played Captain America is a guy named Matt Salinger. And so all they could say was, hey, you know, it's the son of J.D. Salinger. And I remember as a kid even like seeing that and going like, well, why would that excite me about seeing an actor in a movie that his father was a famous writer? Like, why, why, why does that what, what does that mean to me? You know, if you want to say, hey, you know, it's the actor who was on the show. Uh, Kung Fu continues. Oh, OK, cool. He did something. But, you know, like to say, like his father did something. I'm like, OK, great. Catcher in the Rise, a great book. Like, how does that make this? How does that make his son a good Captain America? Wait, he was in Revenge of the Nerds? That I didn't remember. That I didn't remember. That's interesting. Intriguing, intriguing. You know, yeah, now that I think of it, like, Maybe someday for Trash Movie Bonanza, and we've got a bunch of sort of things that we want to cover, but maybe at some point we should just sort of talk about some of the schlockier, low-budget superhero movies that were made before today's era, where we get like big-budget affairs, because uh, there probably could be some fun stuff to talk about there, yeah. Hmm. I've almost got like all the important stuff for the this page uh, down before I sort of go to some digital cleanup and uh, stuff like that. But uh, now I'm going to just in a minute do some fun messing around with either detail or um, these are all supposed to be VHS tapes. So maybe I can try to think of some VHS movies I could represent in tiny little detail. We'll see. It doesn't make him a good Captain America. It makes him a great big phony. Whoa! Rem Lazar. Yeah, could talk about things like Blade 3, Catwoman 2004. But there are even some smaller budgeted ones that we could think about. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, that's kind. Uh, the artist is me, so thank you. Brenda Starr and Prince Valiant. Well, I'll be talking a little bit about Brenda Starr probably in my next episode because uh, Ramona Fraden uh, did Brenda Starr for like, I don't know, 15 years, 10 years, something like I, I have to double check the, the dates. I have to double check. Uh, what movies are comic book based, but the general public has no idea of that? Uh, RoboCop is not based on a comic. No, RoboCop is an original idea. I mean, you could say that he takes ideas from, you know, I don't know, Judge Dredd and stuff like that. But but RoboCop is original. Um, uh, but if you want to talk about movies that are comic book based that people don't know about, I think um, movies like Snowpiercer and Old that are based on European comics. I think movies like uh, A History of Violence by David Cronenberg with Viggo Mortensen. I think movies like uh, Road to Perdition with Tom Hanks. Uh, a lot of times it's if it's not about a superhero, you know, it, it could either be, you know, sci-fi or crime or drama. Uh, people, people forget that things like that are, are comic books. Um, yeah. And there's a bunch like that, to be honest. There's a bunch. If I, if I like sat down and thought for a little bit. Um, but yeah. Yeah, there's a good recent one, Nimona, on Netflix. I haven't seen that yet, but a lot of people don't know that that's <clears throat> based on um, a comic. Creep Show, to be clear, is not. Creep Show is a riff, obviously, on the EC comics and became a comic 
but creep show is not it creep show is all original stories and and ideas with the framework of being in a comic but it was not a comic book before the movie common misconception yeah ghost world that that's a great example i think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily know <laughs> that just means scarlett johansson in another comic book movie that's funny so if we add together like things like black widow ghost in the shell and ghost world all of a sudden scarlett johansson's in a couple more comic book movies <laughs> Summit of the Gods is a French animation based on a Japanese manga. Huh. I don't know that one. Don't know that one. Creepshow uses the comic art style better than even well produced. Creepshow is cool, man. Creepshow is cool. Was the second Creepshow movie the one that had the story, The Raft, where there's like this oily sludge that's going after people on a pond? I like that story. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim and the Losers, that just means that, um, and, and so you add that with things like Snowpiercer, and it means Chris Evans has been in a lot of comic book movies that people don't necessarily know are comic book movies. Um, he did the voice of Casey Jones in the uh, animated TMNT movie from like 2004, uh, and of course, Captain America and Fantastic Four. So Chris Evans... I think Chris Evans has been in the most overall comic book movies. He's at least played the most comic book characters, I think, if you don't count like voice acting, voice acting specifically, if you count like live action people that have also done voice acting. Um, yep. Extraction, Red, those are both good examples of um, comic books, uh, comic book movies that People don't always know is uh, based on on that. Yeah, Chris Evans was the um, the sniper in the Losers. Uh, but I would be curious to see what actor has been in the most live action um, movies, because then we might we like even though it might be Chris Evans, but it honestly like might be Hugh Jackman or. Patrick Stewart. I'd have to think about that. I couldn't tell you why they're not in print. Um, I thought that uh, Road to Perdition was, but yeah, I don't know. All right. Let me switch things up to a tiny little pen tiny little pen maybe somebody can like double check to see what actor has been in the most comic book movies not the most performances but literally just the most comic book movies because it might not be chris evans he's probably played the most comic book characters but he may not be the act. Actually, now that I'm thinking of it, was Chris Evans in Push? Because Push might have also been based on a comic book. I don't know. I have to think about that. Well... Yeah, of course, because Stanley did a bunch of cameos. Let's not count that. Let's just talk full performances. Like, maybe I'm making too many rules at this point. Um, but let's not talk cameos, which means, like, if we were counting up the films, I would say don't count Thor The Dark World for Chris Evans. Because, yes, he technically cameos as Loki in Captain America form. But I, I would say that doesn't really count, does it? Push was original. Okay. I did know that Chris Lotto was in the original Roadhouse, actually. Yeah. I, I don't know why I know that, but I do know a bunch of the stuff that Chris Lotto was in, you know, because he was on Star Trek. He was on um, Married with Children. He, he did a few things. Hey, Steve. Thank you so much. Happy Friday. 
Rosario da Rosario Dawson has been in a bunch, hasn't she? Yeah, Josie and the Pussycats. Yeah, right right now, not perform like I'd be curious perf like number of superhero or number of comic book movies, we'll say. Number of comic book movies. What actor not not somebody who's primarily a voice actor because otherwise it'll probably go to you know a professional voice actor who's done a million shows but let's see um what actor has been in the most comic book movies like released theatrically no, no direct to, to video stuff either let, let let's let's say those for rules because yeah hugh jackman 10 does chris evans get up to 10 he probably does, right? I mean, three Captain Americas, four Avengers, Losers, Snowpiercer, TMNT, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, I guess Stan Lee cameoed in my life, almost knocked him down. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Appreciate the support. Appreciate the support. That's really kind. It's Chris Evans. Well, good for him. So he's comic book royalty in a way. He's comic book royalty if you've done that many comic book movies. Uh, and so, he, and it isn't all just like, say, Marvel or anything, you know? There, there's indie, there's uh, foreign. So good for, good for Chris Evans. I think that I think we've determined that Chris Evans takes it. Hair's pretty messy. Um, yeah. Sometimes I really miss the, it, and it's probably just a nostalgic feeling, but sometimes I really do miss uh, going around the, the video stores and, uh, and just browsing, trying to decide what to watch. I'm just drawing a, a video store here, so it's making me think about that stuff. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, Brandon Routh, yeah, J.K. Simmons. Video stores is where it's at, and I mean, there, there. I know that there are still some out there, but there, there aren't many. I don't think it's something people do regularly. Alamo Cinemas has a video store selection. That's cool. Doing good. Aces. Um, there's a place here in Seattle called Scarecrow Video that's, I think, the world's largest video store. It's very big. It's very big. It's basically more like a library, but it's got everything you could like want to find, which is cool. I've seen some of it, especially when I did my episode on um, Jeff Darrow. I, I rewatched some of it. Yeah. My spouse is about to do a craft fair. I'm going to try and sell that comic I sent you. Good luck. That sounds great. Good luck. 
yeah, Scarecrow video is pretty amazing. Uh, that makes sense. Frank Welker has been doing voice work for so long, of course. And I mean, he did voices in like each of the Transformers movies and all the Scooby-Doo stuff. So you add that up alone and, and, and you get ahead of most people. Hi. Let's see. Speaking of Jeff Darrow, did you know that David Fincher wanted to adapt Hard Boiled and have Nicolas Cage as the main character? It rings a bell, but off the top of my head, I don't know any details about it. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Hard Boiled. Hmm. I, I, you'd have to expand it a little bit beyond what you get in the comics. There's a story there, but it, it's a pretty quick story, all things considered. How did you react the first time someone handed you money for something you made? I might just start crying. I don't know if I really remember, to be honest. I'm sure that, like, I I'm positive that in grade school, I probably did a sketch for somebody for, like, a quarter. But I, I try to be humble, so I probably played it off as, like, they're doing me a kindness if I'm just knowing myself. <laughs> My favorite thing about the show is besides the comics chat is it's like I'm in a virtual artist studio. I'm working on some art, Chris and I, and I assume many more of us. Yeah, usually a bunch of people do. Yeah, we weren't talking about uh, John Woo uh, hardboiled. We were talking about the uh, Frank Miller, Jeff Darrow hardboiled. But I will say hardboiled from Hong Kong, that is one of my favorite action movies, period. I love it. I love that movie. It it moves, man. That that movie cooks. God of Gamblers, no question. For a better tomorrow, one and two. Yeah. Love those John Woo movies. Uh, 1980s and 1990s Hong Kong cinema is so great. That 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 is just my era, man. I love that stuff. If it, if it had Jackie Chan in it, if it had Chow Yun Fat in it, I saw it and I loved it. Of that stuff. It's not like today's Hong Kong movies can't do a good action scene or don't have talented people. It's just that the stuff that they tend to choose now for subject matter is all stuff that, you know, the Chinese government is going to approve. So it, it tends to be lots of like historical dramas and uh, stuff like that. Like you don't get the same sort of crime stories that you got in the 90s. You just don't. And I miss it. I, I really do. It was such an exciting time to. You could you could count on so much of it being entertaining. I remember uh, mid nineties. Um, I'm out of college and I'm working in Boston. And during my lunch breaks, I would go to the Chinatown there. I found this great hole-in-the-wall shop. It didn't even have a sign that it was a store. It was behind a, um, it was behind a Vietnamese pho place. And what it did, though, was it got import DVDs. Probably a lot of them were bootleg, but uh, from 
Japan and from Hong Kong. And I discovered so many cool movies before they were out in the theaters, like, you know, the original uh, Ring or um, Infernal Affairs, which famously got adapted into The Departed over here. But also, like, you know, there was just so much good Jackie Chan stuff I was discovering for, uh, that he did in the 80s. God, it was fun. It was really fun to discover all that stuff. Yeah, City on Fire, Kung Fu Hustle, Shaolin Soccer, so good, so, so good. Um, but coming across, like, you know, Police Story 2 and Drunken Master 2, um, Project A 1 and 2, you know, like, there were so many good Jackie Chan movies in the 80s. Mm, loved that stuff, loved that era. Miss it, miss it a lot. But I've always liked trying to dig into um, foreign movies because it feels like that's where you can discover some cool stuff. You know, for a long time now, um, South Korea has been making a lot of good movies, especially like sort of horror and, and drama. Like South Korea has been making a lot of really good stuff for a while now. I like a lot of what's coming out through them. Fight scenes aren't as great as they used to because doctors are directors are afraid of good lighting, wide shots, editing slower than 12 seconds a shot. I, sometimes that's true, but but not always our snuff. There's still good action movies that know how to do stuff well. I mean, um, is it Gareth? Um, who does the the raid movies? Who did the, the those those were both really good. Uh, Uh, Gareth Evans. Yeah. Gareth Evans knows how to do a, a good fight scene, how to give it room to breathe. Even if he isn't doing like uh, the raid, uh, you know, his movies have really well, well done action scenes, really, really well done. So there are still people that know how to put that together. Um, yeah, there are. Gold, always believe in your soul. A letterboxed account? No, I don't have that. I don't. I don't think I know exactly what that is. I think is it a place where you can do reviews? Because I I know I've seen links to it, but I, I yeah I don't know what uh what letterboxed is, and I don't have an account there. Can I tell you how to make a good indie comic? Not quickly, no. 
there I would just say make a good story, you know, make a good story. Conan or was that a camel? I'm just making little not like tiny little marks to uh, indicate that there's some sort of uh, artwork on these covers on these VHS tapes that I'm putting on the shelf. Great job. I don't know if it's a great job. Would I did I ever do a video about the Marvel No Prize? Um, no, uh, it's a funny bit of history, but there's not a lot to it per se, to be honest. Like, I, I, I think less than five minutes is all it would really take to, to recap the history of what the No Prize was and, and, and what they did with it. Um, so, no, I've never done that. Uh, there are so many little bits of comic book history that at first sound interesting, but then I start like going like, okay, well, what do I actually have to say to about this? That's additive and, and, and would be insightful or, or give people something to go on. And um, yeah, that's one that I, I couldn't think of a whole lot to add. I, I wish I could, but, but I don't know. Oh, this is uh, Letterboxd. It's a site where you can log and review movies that you watch. That sounds fun, but you know what? I don't think I'd have time to do much of it because I want to spend my efforts doing like review type stuff on comic tropes or pros and cons. And then for time to actually watch movies, I just don't have as much time. Oh, that's nice of you to say. If there was a compilation of the actual no prizes and if any ideas ever became canon, that would be cool. But I don't know if that ever happened. Too many to to, to summarize. And, I, and and most of them are going to be like really minor, like nitpicky type things. Most of no, no, no prizes is more about like, you know, saying like, um, I'm trying to think like Human Torch said that he can only juggle up to five fireballs, but in issue 27, he said that he could juggle six fireballs. My explanation is he already had a fireball going. So when he said five, he was referring to five more, you know, like it, it's all stuff like that. But anyway, um, I realized that I've been going for over an hour. Thanks for letting me just sort of doodle some little details um, with you. I, I had fun. I'm, close to wrapping this page up but um yeah we'll see i'll uh i'll, I'll touch some of this up uh digitally you know and I, I need to fill in some videos here and in here and put like uh just duplicate these pages on these panels because it's supposed to be the same shot uh, i'll probably like do this drawing on each of these so but i'll probably do a bunch of that digitally to be honest and then clean it up and um and that's that. But you know what? I probably will do a live stream next week because I thought of a pretty funny King Kong comic strip I think I'd like to draw uh, with the movie coming out. I think I've got a, a gag that I want to draw. So I think I'll do I'll, I'll do one of these next week. In the meantime, I'm going to get back to work on comic tropes. Um, it's not going to be ready this weekend. Just want to set expectations. But my goal is to get it out before the month ends. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you for the super chats and the kind comments and the conversation uh, and the education on movies and comics that I should look out for. I really appreciate that. You guys are amazing. Uh, I will uh, see you live on this channel on Monday. And there's a new episode of Trash Movie Bonanza currently being edited. So there's a lot more content coming. Uh, I better go get to work on it. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Keep reading comics.